Hi, my name is Louis Renero. Today we'll talk about surrogate models. After, at first, we'll talk about what is exactly surrogate models. Then we'll talk about on what context we'll use them. Then we'll talk about the methodology and explored models. And at the end, we'll talk about the results and conclusion. The surrogate models are mainly regression models used to interpolate data when these data are not easy to collect. These interpolated data can be then used in combination with the real data to feed another machine learning model, either for regression or classification. We can call it a substitution model. These are useful when the data is less available or even sometimes not available at all. We only need to outline the unknown data and then uh, with known data, and then we can do the predictions. Generally, we can use any regression models as surrogate models, but University of Michigan developed a surrogate modeling toolbox that contained libraries of well-tested and well-documented tools implementing surrogate models. In the next part, we will present the context of our project. Here we consider an erbium dot fiber amplifier ADFA simulator to generate a set of training points and apply different surrogate models. There are several input parameters for the simulation that we can adjust them to obtain the gain. So we can vary one or more parameters to observe the variation of the gain. The interesting input parameters are cladding radius, core radius, doping radius, doping concentration, and so on. In our project, cladding radius and doping radius are varied. This figure shows the structure of the simulation. Finally, about uh, 2,000 uh, different pairs are considered for the input of the EDFA simulator. Each run takes about 12 minutes. So generating the whole data set uh, needs uh, about at least uh, uh, 20 days. In the next slide, There are two scenarios to use surrogate models. If an outcome of interest is expensive in time consuming or otherwise uh, difficult measurements, because uh, it comes from a complex computer simulation or it cannot done uh, experimentally, a cheap and fast surrogate model of the outcome can be used instead. In this case, we want to approximate our black box prediction. Here is an EDFA as closely as possible with the surrogate model prediction function. We go to the next slide. Uh, it's, this is a real live matter that we are dealing with. We use all the data for training to predict unknown data and the best parameter found in the test phase. In the next slide, uh, for every method we use, we need a metric to know how it will do, how, how well it does. Uh, in this project, we use three errors for the metric, including mean absolute error with uh, this uh, mathematical formula, mean squared error and its formula. And the advantage is giving more weight on the way out prediction, root mean squared error and the formula. You can see uh, it has advantage of being in the same unit as the predicted output. In the next slide, uh, we use several uh, surrogate model, including the radial basis function or RBF, uh, which is a surrogate model representing through interpolation function as a linear combination of basis function. One for each training point, RBFs are named as such uh, because the basis function dep depends only on the distance from the prediction point to the training point. Uh, for the basis function. The coefficient uh, of the basis function are computed during the training stage. The next one is cricking, that is an interpolating model that is a linear combination of a known function of known function, which is added to a real realization of a stochastic process. The next one is inverse distance weightening or IDW model, which is an interpolating method. And the unknown point are calculated with a weighted average of uh, the sampling point. The first one is regularized minimal energy tensor product spleen or RMTS, which is a type of surrogate model for low dimensional problem and with large data set. And 
the number of other instances was more than two thousands. The underlying mathematical function or tensor product plane, which limit our MTS up to four D problems or five D problems in certain case. On the other hand, uh, tensor product plane enable a very fast prediction time uh, that does not that uh, does not increase with the number of training point. Unlike the other uh, method like creaking and uh, RBF, our MTS is not susceptible to the numerical issue when law a large uh, when law when there is a large number of training point or when there is a point that are too close together and the last one is second order polynomial approximation the next slide so for uh, for our experiments we uh, tried many scenarios at first we tried as if we wanted to save time on the measurements so we removed at first 80 percent of the data and even we tried with 90% of the data removed from the, the original data to see if they, go, they give good results. After that, after that, we tried as if we couldn't make any measurements on any particular range of the data. In this case, when we're missing measurements for a certain range of the doping radius. Now you can see the, the results um, for the predictions and the results are very good. In this table, it's for time consuming data. And the, the other one is when we're not available, when some data are not available at all. In this table, we wanted to uh, calculate three different kind of errors, MAE, MSE, and RMSE for our three different output that we had for the predicted minimum gain, predicted optimal length, and predicted gain for wavelengths, uh, which in our case was uh, 1,586 uh, nanometer. And uh, for two different number of uh, data that we were using. So as you can see, we can reduce the error by increasing the number of data that uh, you are using. And in comparison between the models that we were uh, using, the RBF was uh, acting so much better. Uh, in the next slide. Uh, the goal was to obtain an appropriate approximation for the main function using surrogate models. We evaluated surrogate models, especially the radial basis function, RBF, and Kriging models, since they could provide information about the model uncertainly. So surrogate uh, is a solution when some data are hard to collect or take a lot of time. And radial basis function is the best surrogate model uh, in two scenarios for our data set. We saw if we use surrogate model, we can save a lot of time and reduce the computational time using surrogate model significantly because our data set takes uh, 20 days. Finally, our results show uh, for better prediction, we need more training data. The next slide is the references that we were using. And thanks for your time. 